Hello, Marco Polo here with the Valhalla Movement Podcast, and today we've got uh, a guest who I've really wanted to talk to and learn more about what he's doing, um, and him and a group of people who are doing it. Uh, we'll learn a little bit about what is called the New Earth Project. Uh, today we're talking to Sasha Stone, who's one of the founding members of this, uh, this I guess, movement of people really coming together to radically change the way that we live and radically change um, the world to being kind of the world that we know is possible in our hearts, right? We, we all have this collective feeling of that we can live and, and do and operate in a better way. And so how can we, we get there? And it seems like Sasha and his team have some answers. So uh, thank you for being here. Thank you, Mark. Good, good to speak to you. Um, yeah, uh, it is all about it is all about change. It's all about us recognizing that we are the change and that we are um, the only defining factor that makes any difference in bringing about change. But what is change after all? Mm -hmm. um, th th there's a lot of Barack Obama called uh, for change and for hope, and look what he gave us. Um, so we, we need to seriously evaluate um, our own um, capacity to get suckered in to the dream spelling and the uh, spell binding that is constantly being uh, wrought against us by politics, by uh, a, a toxic media machine that works directly on behalf of um, commercial interests and central banking interests. Uh, we need to start to remove ourselves, our minds, our hearts, our attention from the billboards and the magazines, the strap lines, the MTV culture, um, because so much of it has become highly toxic to the human spirit. Absolutely. So the movement that we are engaged with uh, is really the movement of the awakening human heart. It's no different. And it'll be a resounding success or it'll be a crashing failure, depending entirely on the capability of people of the world to step up to this call. Uh, we know that we've heard the call. We know that we're stepping up. Um, and it seems to me that you and your crew are as well. But there we have it. This is not a movement that we're trying to impose on the world. Um, this, is, this, is a, this, is a, this is a tone. This is a beautiful blue tone that we're striking. Mm -hmm. And people will answer to that and it'll, it'll end up being a symphony or it will not. Let's see. Absolutely. So, I mean... In trying to create this symphony and trying to make something happen, I mean, you guys have have basically launched a project called the New Earth Project, which is which is what exactly? I mean, for for I've I've read up on it, but for maybe the people who aren't listening or who haven't read up on it, um, what can how can you describe the project? What is the main intentions of the project, and what are you guys trying to put together? Very an independent state of being. It is a new nation, it's a new country, a new nation, so to speak, that is not It is an extraterritorial nation, um, a, a, a grouping of people uh, from all around the world, people of different uh, faiths, different cultures and different persuasions, different uh, socioeconomic um, divides. And what all of these people around the world who are being bonded into the uh, covenant of fellowship, uh, acknowledging one thing, that we are all of us human, all too human, and uh, we need to reclaim ourselves, um, we need to reclaim our dignity, we re need to uh, extricate ourselves from fear and time and money and control of others, of priests and doctors and teachers, all of whom are feeding into uh, an old script, an old script which makes no goddamn sense to us any longer. Mm -hmm. And under our own common sense, we declare ourselves to be sovereign. We declare ourselves under to be our own court of record, moreover, which is what? That means that you become your own uh, court. If you get some parking ticket offense, that tries to strap you down for two or three hundred dollars or five hundred dollars or any kind of penalty that's being levied at people on the streets of cities just trying to screw them for money because they walked across a road or didn't look at a 
traffic light in, 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 in you know, one second earlier, whatever, all of that is commerce, pure commerce mm -hmm. being conducted on behalf of uh, central bankers who control the governments, the corporate governments of our world and the police and the so-called um, uh, legislatures and judiciary are operating hand in glove on behalf of those central bankers, central controllers. And all that humans are are fodder for harvesting, okay, for penalizing and harvesting. Mm -hmm. You flipped into a birth bond when you're born, you're screwed against the wall until you die. And if you go to prison, you're flipped into a prison bond, which will make them even more money than your birth bond. You are the one who creates your credit. There is no money without us human beings. It is the fact that we have a birth certificate that is flipped into a bond. That bond is traded on the stock market. We are never disclosed that. They never tell us that that money is, is owed to us. It is your money. And uh, they then lend it to you in spits and spurts throughout your life with a credit card here, a mortgage there. And then you have to pay interest on that bullshit. So go figure. That's what's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, we, there's, there's no doubt about the facts. There's no doubt about the fact that the fractional reserve banking system um, and the, you know, the top-down model of society right now is, is completely corrupt. In fact, that's kind of what spurred a lot of my personal awakening. When I learned where money came from and when I just got started asking myself the question, well, like, well, who controls money? I mean, if everyone's, if money's controlling everything, then who controls that? Who gets to decide when that's printed? Who gets to decide who gets it and who doesn't? Who gets to decide all these interest rates and all that stuff? And through the, the knowing of, of that kind of stuff, I, you know, I mean, my eyes opened wide, right? I mean, whether it be, whether they open to different elements of conspiracy theories, okay, you know, things like the Illuminati and that, that kind of stuff, which I'm sure do exist, but it's not, it's not about that. It's more about the, the, fa the sound fundamentals of the monetary system just do not exist. I mean, we have more debt than there is money, so how can we ever get out of debt? It's a pointless conversation, respectfully, Mark. We're wasting good God-given energy and oxygen even talking Absolutely. about this dialectic. Absolutely. So I wanted to talk about, and I wanted to move into talking about um, something that I read on your website, which is free point economics. Uh, and it seems like you guys are kind of based off of free point economics. So maybe if you can explain what that is, because yeah. I'm finding uh, varying degrees of, of, of kind of definitions or, or the explanation of the models is slightly different online, so maybe it's you fine. want to give me well, we're, calling it, we're calling it zero point economics, and I'm d alarmed to hear that there's conflict in what we're writing on, on the portal because there shouldn't be, because zero point economics is very straight. It's about reboot, rebooting the entire global economy, rebooting the entire uh, 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 local economy, rebooting the entire social ecology of the planet, which means people how people engage with people, how people engage with planet, how we engage with our resources, how we buy and sell and trade illusions with one another. The whole damned lot needs to be rebooted into what? To zero point. So we call it zero point economy, which means bring it all back to now, to here and now, to what is real. Mm -hmm. All of us facing one another in a circle, looking eye to eye, exchanging fire in the eyes, men and women, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters of God, and stop this godless racketeering and profiteering and usurious nonsense. There was a reason why uh, the temple was overturned 2,000 years ago. There is a reason why people in the, uh, of the world are rising up given the Occupy Wall Street movement and the Arab Spring and all the rest of it, that's the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is, there is something called human dignity. Okay, it is the sentient spark in human beings. It will not be violated beyond a certain point. We have been violated way beyond that point. Mm -hmm. It's now a tinderbox. It's going to take one spark. Now, the question is, how do we address economy? Do we, do we wait to be harvested? Do we wait for catastrophic failure? Do we wait for World War III to be engineered in front of us exactly the way that World War II, World War I, the Napoleonic Wars, every major war in history has been engineered by these uh, uh, central uh, banking shenanigans? Are we simply going to wait to be harvested into the next great culling exercise? I think not. I think that that sentient spark, even on the streets of Chicago and Johannesburg, 
and Lima. I believe that there is enough heart intelligence in people, especially young people, to not allow that monstrosity to prevail. So what does it mean? How do we get ourselves out and create a new economy? We mm -hmm. need to be the determiners of that. Mark, that's the point. Oh, absolutely. You You're your own banker. I'm my own banker. I create my money. What is my money backed by? My heart. Mm -hmm. My intelligence. Mm -hmm. My creativity. My ideas. Mm -hmm. My energy. My consciousness in action. My reputation. These are tangible assets. And they are infinite. Mm -hmm. They do not run out like trees run out. Okay, like coal and oil and gas runs out. Those are not uh, infinite. So why do we not back our currency with mm -hmm. what we have, which is absolute? This is what the zero point economy truly speaks to, is getting us back down to the business of relationship, human beings engaging with human beings. I will mow your lawn in return for you walking my dog. I will teach your kids in, re in return for you if you're a dentist doing dental treatment on my kids. Whatever the exchange is, it's eye to eye, man to man, woman to man, man to woman, woman to woman. That's how it should be. What do you do? Remove the priest, mm -hmm. the banker. The banker is the priest. Remove the intercessionary. Throw away the sunglasses. Take off the condom if it comes to it. Do not try to take out insurance policies against the future. Do not take out pensions schemes. Do not gamble. Mm -hmm. Start to live. Start to engage in the now, the zero point. And because it, life is about it, the now. And it, it absolutely, I fully agree with that. I mean, it's all about being conscious in the present moment. I mean, what we have is right in front of us. What we have is also our intentions. And if we put our, our hearts and, and souls and beings into, into changing the world, then we can make it happen. But people are obviously are going to ask the question, right? Because people were in this mind frame and people coming and trying to come out of this mind frame, people listening to this kind of podcast, for example, who are still working for their money and doing all these things that we're in a reality right now where they are going to say, okay, well, is there a currency? Is yes. there, okay. So maybe yes. go into how that works. Cause it sounds like, yes, I, I agree with the, the eye to eye. I agree with like, you know, remove some of the loans, remove the bankers, remove all this, this fluff and this creation out of nothing that, that me leads to nothing, basically? Mark, Mark, there is no easy answer to this, okay? There oh, is no, no, I know. There's no sugar-coated pill here. Because oh, let I me tell you what's agree. happening. Our global economy is being detonated as we speak. It is being systemically collapsed from the inside. And there are a clutch of Anglo-Saxon uh, uh, gents who know exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily know the outcome. We will determine the outcome. The point is... Is, and the rigging of silver market and the gold market and, and all the other markets are fundamentally rigged into play. So the question is step out of that. There is no sugar-coated pill that we can give your listeners or any listeners. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to take the bitter pill themselves in the sanctity of their own uh, meditations or their own um, uh, reality check or it's going to be married to them by catastrophic failure in their city, in their country because it's happening. And I'm not, I'm not uh, an Armageddon merchant, a doomsday merchant. I'm just saying, look around. There are no more countries for the United States of America and the Anglo-Saxons in the West to violate and go and attack, preemptively strike and, and raid the coffers and raid the resources. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot left to steal. And, and All the sandwiches have been stolen from the skinny kids in the school, and now you've got a, a bunch of bullies standing in the corner. They got all the sandwiches, and the rest of the world is starving, going, hey, there's a raw deal going on in this playground, and the skinny kids are, are organizing themselves now, and they're going to make a run at the bullies. All right, the absolutely. Is, where are we in the mix? Yep. Where are we standing? Where is New Earth Nation in the mix? Well, we are not uh, 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 promoting uh, any kind of clash. What we are suggesting to folks is that they check out of the continued illusory matrix. Now, for a catastrophe. Step into the world that you want to create. It's a virtual zone right now, but it becomes a real one. In fact, it's a very real zone that we're dealing with. We're dealing with over in over 160 odd countries, and that's six months after launch. No time at all. That gives you an indication. Quarter of a million followers gives you an indication of where we're growing and how we're growing. It's very tangible. We anticipate our first retreats, the groundbreaking, to happen within the next three, three to four months. 
we anticipate that by the end of the first quarter, into the second quarter of next year, that we have the first fledgling pioneers moving into pilot communities. Mm -hmm. And depending on the state of the global economy, that's going to happen sooner rather than later. But uh, this is a, 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 an aggregating point that we have created, that we continue to evolve, and it's open to all comers. And we are saying this is your nation, it's our extraterritorial nation. It's not owned by the bankers, it's not owned by the priests or the politicians. You're not going to have syringes stuck in your arms and microchips fed into your artery. You are going to be a free, sovereign being under God's law, under universal law, under natural justice, under your own dignity. And there are going to be tens of millions of us, hundreds of millions, billions in time. That is for sure. And on the subject of time, time is pretty much over. Because that is another construct of fear and of control. Mm -hmm. Of how Babylonian hierarchies and priesthoods have also imposed uh, 1260 time signatures on humans. All that the 1260 time signature has done is dislocated us from our natural cycles, from our capacity to read the sun, moon, and stars, to know when to plant things and when not to plant them, when to send the sheep into the field and bring them back in. We used to be intuitively connected to this earth and to the solar system. Human being had an innate logic it resonated with them before the imposition of these religious structures, which forced a 1260 time signature, carved straight lines through the planet and segregated us all into different time zones, just like they did in the days of Babel and gave us a thousand languages where was all of a sudden we couldn't understand one another. That's exactly the same complex, imposing all these time. Uh, time allocation has served bankers. Money makers, people who want to harvest human beings and their time and their consciousness and their energy. Do you get it? Time is an anathema. We need to release ourselves from time. This is why we launched the Zero Point Clock only a few days ago with uh, Foster Gamble and Nassim Hariman and uh, Michael Tellinger and a great many of our good friends. There are a lot of people waking up to the fact, Mark, that time has got to change. We can no longer simply put a, a, a clock on the wall or a watch on our wrist and imagine that that's how we should be governing our energy and rationing our energy and our motion. It is so toxic. It's so out of natural cycle and solar cycle and galactic cycle. To that's be a, living like that's that. a very interesting observation. I mean, to say that I never really thought about it that way. Like, you know, I, I always saw time as just a way of, of a reference point, right? It's like, hey, what time are we going to meet up? We both agree that this is the time of the day. And I agree that in today's society where we are disconnected, we need that, that, that thing, right? We need that watch. We need that cell phone or whatever but it stop, is. Stop there because you thought that we need to define the time here and now. But your, your neighbor just over the border is in a different uh, time zone. And there's another one there, another one there. So actually all it did was discombobulated us from a unified time signature. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to say is that it, ironically – in, in trying to organize time, what we did is lose time. We lost track of, of the real time, the, the real I'm circadian sorry. rhythms that we go in and out of, the real times where, hey, you know what, I, it's, it's noon and I just ate lunch, maybe I should sleep and go down for a bit and come back up and later, you know what I mean? Maybe, uh, maybe they I should got plans for you, Mark. They want you, to, you know, the, 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 the uber lords um, of, of history have wanted human beings to shuffle into the factory on time, shuffle out on time. And I mean, that goes back, you know, hundreds and hundreds of human beings. Yep. And, there, and there's an interesting movie. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's an American movie called In Time, I believe, with like Justin Timberlake or whatever it is. And, and, and they talk, yeah, and they talk about like how you, you're being paid in time, right? And then every time you go to work, you get more time and whatever it is. <laughs> and I love that movie because I was like, you know what? As much as it's Justin Timberlake Hollywood production, Sometimes the movies actually are enlightening. Sometimes they do tell you something that is like, oh, shit, man, we are doing this. And then there are people with billions of years of time. And what, what it really is, is is money. And it's all these, these weird constructs that we've created that, that really don't make sense and aren't natural to us. And what is natural to us is when we go outside barefoot, you, you put your, plant your feet in the, in the soil and you start gardening and you, you grow a plant and you pick a tomato or you, you listen to the birds and things around you. All those things are such... 
such things that we've completely disconnected from. And, right. you know, m myself and, and the group around me at Valhalla and, and people who follow us, and I'm, I'm assuming people who have, have jumped on to, to following you and supporting you guys, all feel this way. Now, as you said, there is no magic pill, right? There is no, there's no easy way to be like, hey, we're going to change this tomorrow, and it's all going to go away, and we're going to have this, this new earth tomorrow. But what we can do, and this is really important, is that we can step into the change of what you were saying too, is we have, we have the responsibility of saying, well, look, shit's fucked up. We want to get out of there. We want to, we want to move away from this, and we want to move into this. And it's not to say that you or I have all the answers. We don't. What we have is just the ambition and the determination to actually moving away from the current paradigm into a much more kind of sacred paradigm, into a much more, uh, a much more natural paradigm that we kind of feel inside of us as, as, as animals, basically, of this planet, you know, as, as real beings within, within this existence and within this universe. And I think it's tough because there's no real answer. You know, people... We're doing something called Earthships, right? We're building something called Earthships, which are off-the-grid buildings. Uh, they use recycled tires and bottles and cans and all these things. You might have heard of them and stuff. And you guys have plans out, which um, I'm assuming really led to a lot of the, the hype and things and the amount of people who are, are listening to you guys because you had great videos and great plans and, and great structures that you guys are proposing. And so We're not what, proposing to building them, but carry on. Well, We've, sorry, yeah, sorry, that you're proposing as, as a solution, but yes, that you are, you know, actively trying to build and, and, and getting and acquiring land and, and trying to build these communities around the world. That's beautiful, and, that's, and all these little movements actually turned it into a tangible thing, where when people are like, well, how am I going to live, how am I going to pay my, how am I going to eat, how am I going to, you know, stay warm, how am I going to do this? And these buildings provided that, that ability to say, hey, I can remove myself from the grid. I can kind of step out if I grow my own food, if I join in with other people, because I can't do everything on our own. We can't, and we have to realize that the change is going to happen as a, and this is a unified front, not as a, not as an individual. Yes, you, you step out as an individual, but you need to step out with other people as well. We all kind of need to take this step forward. And I think projects like yours, projects like ours, projects around the world, um, are, are that, that change. They are that, that, that step in the right direction. Um, so tell me a little bit more about, I mean, you, you, you talked about you guys were going to break ground in three or four months. I mean, tell me a little bit more about your intentions on, I guess, what you're building and then, you know, how you guys see, the, I guess, the governance of it. Like, how do you guys plan on managing it? Who, who gets to come? Who doesn't get to come? That kind of stuff, you know? There, there's, there's no selection process. That that's self-selecting, self-determining. Understand something. This is a movement. It's not to own anything. We don't ever wish to own anything. All the land holdings of come are owned by the land owners. The deeds stay in their name. If they want to be part of the protectorate, they can split the, split the rights and put some of the um, uh, rights to the trust in order to create so we can the protection They don't have their foreclosed by a bank. Um, that's just uh, some, of the, um, some of the neat tricks that we're teaching people uh, who are entering the New Earth Nation. And a lot of them, we're going to be inviting a lot of people who have homes being foreclosed on or farms being foreclosed on by banks. Sign up with us, quick smart, because we can then assign you as custodians. We take on the right. Let, let the banks come at us and our law commission and at our law academy. We'd love to tangle with them and educate them as to the complete treason and criminality that most of these banks are engaged with in mortgages. This is well understood, okay? But, you know... Talking about food, um, how are we going to eat? Well, we're going to eat well. We're, going, we're not going to be eating Monsanto food. We're not going to be eating that. We're going to be eating food that doesn't uh, pop. We're going to be living in bioarchitecture structures that are life affirming, be proving this ourselves. We built up the prototypes. Bioarchitecture, I mean, the new nation um, portal and check out the, the design and development faculty or check out the Bioarchitecture Academy that we've launched. Uh, it's all there. We've got uh, hundreds of different designs, bioarchitected designs that are life affirming. We're going saplings and charging us seeds inside our structures, our buildings that we've built. And we've built accelerators and we're getting unbelievable growth factor, a 400% increase 
identity and growth of saplings from seeds that have been charged inside the living environment that we've created. This is intelligent stuff. This is pure physics. This is fractal energetics, scalar ocean energetics, advanced science we're dealing with. And we're not, the, the point I'm making is uh, the hippies had it right back in the day. They intuited a lot of the stuff that we're seeing now. Mm-hmm. They were chewing peyote and doing whatever they were doing, but they were onto it intuitively. And they were exploring the realms of ideation, using the drug culture and the sex culture. God love them for it. I'm a, I'm a product of that generation. But here we've got, you know, four decades later, we actually arrived at the point where science is called with uh, many of our beaded um, um, and braided friends of the 60s. Science has finally caught up. Now we're on. We're all on the to Nat Harriman. Listen to Dan Winter. Listen to these extraordinary breakthrough um, uh, physicists, what they're exploring and discovering. It's very hand in glove with what we were intuiting uh, half a century ago. So it's kind of like coming together of the generations in that sense. We're building buildings that are life affirming. We're growing gardens that are life affirming. We're superstructuring and charging water, imploding the water molecule mm-hmm. through, through basic uh, technology, which is in turn uh, becoming enlightened. And that water becomes an anchor point of the so-called fifth dimension. Laugh all you like. That is being borne out in the laboratory. We're seeing it happen. Water is an anchor. And the enlightened water molecule, as Masaru Emoto is uh, teaching us in Japan, by meditating and blessing water, you change the molecular structure and out comes a beautiful fractal design. And uh, you curse the water, it becomes poison. And it, it, it becomes fractally mutated. Beautiful stuff. That is how intention and consciousness are impacting water. Now, go figure. We are 90-some percent water, human beings. Mm-hmm. So when we're sending blessings and curses to one another, we are literally mutating one another. We are the ones who are creating the cancers. We are the ones who are creating all of the illness and the debility that we find. So and, let's check out and change it. And, and isn't that interesting to say that we are the people who are basically, in that way, we are the people who can kind of indirectly control the bankers and the people and the world around us and all the politicians, all these things, by, by changing our consciousness. If we change well, our, our, you know... Stop paying. Stop paying into it, Mark. Number one, start with the terrestrial field of engagement. Start with physicality. Manifest physicality. Stop paying taxes. Stop paying into a system which is uh, mutilating brothers and sisters on the other side of the planet. Stop paying into a system which is building tanks and missiles and strutting around and pretending that we've got enemies on every corner. No, we don't. The enemies we've got are within. Governments have become the enemy of people in many respects. That needs to change. It is incumbent on us to make that change. So I'm I'm suggesting stop paying in physically and manifestly into the system that we want to change. One. Secondly, change the field of engagement with our intentions. And stop putting attention there. Will we put attention on those lies that come on the, on the, on the front page of newspapers? So-and-so is doing such-and-such. And, such. and we give that attention. And we take it seriously. We pick up the phone and talk about who Gwyneth Paltrow is sleeping with. For God's sake. Who cares? But we keep giving attention. Attention is light. Mm-hmm. Attention is photons, literally. We're sending streams of trillions of photons from our eyes from the cerebral cortex, from the pineal, our endocrine, our entire bodily system is a generator of high, high, high density energy. Mm -hmm. We're sending that energy toward the things that we're giving our attention to. And we're thereby energizing them. We're creating all the demons. Stop it. Just stop it. We definitely, I I fully, I mean, everything you say, uh, there's so many things that I know people are asking themselves and, and, but when you've kind of stepped into this, this new paradigm for yourself, you'll understand everything that, that Sasha just pointed out. Because I understand that. I understand that the attention is, is the power that we have. And if we put our intentions, our intentions and our attention away from the, the problems and we put them into the solutions and we, we start marching forward towards those solutions, then it can work. Now, most people, you, you, you say, look, stop paying into the system. But most people are scared to do that. That's the toughest step, right? Like if there's one thing that people have to 
have to jump over. No, it's not. Stop. Sorry to do this to you, brother. Yeah. I know this is your show, but I'm going to stop you. No, that it's is okay. not. The you're, you're the guest. The, tu- the toughest thing is to bury your child who has been poisoned by by toxic food. That's tougher. There are a lot tougher things to do than stop paying tax. Think about it. What we need to do is actually think about it. Well, if think it, about it. Continue, continually paying into the system, which is killing us. I, I fully agree with you. The question is, people, people are scared. I guess the, the, I said the wrong words. People are scared to do that because that's what they've grown up to know and that's what they know. And, and, and you, you can't fault them for it. It's very so understandable. Transcend it. Step out of it. Uh, Hit the switch. It doesn't feel good. Fear does not feel good, right? Absolutely. Step out of it. That's it. End of next conversation. And and so, in your personal life and and with with the New Earth Project, New Earth Nation, have you guys with the land that you guys are acquiring that you're building on? Have you guys stepped out? Have you guys stopped paying your taxes? Have you guys stopped doing all these things and built it? Yes, I have not paid taxes since 1997. First of August. Come and get me. (laughs) <laughs> you know what that's a beautiful thing though it's, but it, it, some people are like well aren't they going to come and get you no you know, and what, and what? Well, well, back up. Who is, we've worked out who they are Mark mm-hmm. we've already worked it out they're a very brave and noble guy out there three man law domain in the sovereignty law domain in the common law domain there are a lot of brave investigators out there journalists and others and there are people like myself done a lot of grunt work of many years in, in the process of government here. We work a highly treacherous and treasonable construct, which is beings and fundamentally harvesting them. It's called a pain and I but it's true. I'm not going to sit and talk stuff here and talk about how we can construe a rainbow over the, over the, around the corner. No, no rainbow will emerge until we engage with the fire of now. And it's a cleansing fire, it's a purifying one. Mm-hmm. But it's about acknowledging that my fear is my fear is my fear. I am the creator of my fear. I am the sustainer of my fear. And when I choose to transcend fear, fear will no longer have dominion over me. This is an individual Rubicon that I need to cross, okay? And if I do not cross it, there is no medicine that can be given to me to alleviate the fear. People will say, ah, win the lottery. Well, we all know what happens to people who win the lottery, okay? (laughs) But it's not about money. It's not about being being, uh, uh, being, uh, rescued by an outside agency. It's about us engaging with ourselves in a relationship. That's the basis of, of, of Shiva and Shakti, of, of Kundalini rising, of the, the purpose of meditation and yoga, of any transcendental expression, of high art, of anything, of any value or substance indicates the same thing to us. We need to engage in relationship with ourselves. And once we do that, we emerge from fear. It, it doesn't have containment over us. It cannot. There's no space for it when we're standing in what I call central sun. Mm-hmm. So, so, so that's a really interesting concept because personally, on a, on a personal level, I, I battle with these kind of things all the time. I mean, and we all do, I think, naturally. But let me talk a little bit about Valhalla and give you a little bit of a rundown of what we're doing and how we're, we're actually we're, we're meeting this, this point where we're going to have to make a very big decision, for example. So Valhalla has a 60-acre piece of land, South Shore, Montreal, about 20 minutes away from the major city, basically Montreal. And we have started to practice permaculture. We planted a whole bunch of trees and, we're, and we built this Earthship greenhouse and now we want to build an Earthship Sustainability Learning Center. So a place where people can come and learn about permaculture, learn about uh, eco-constructions, learn about community and learn about how you can step out of your, your current system and your current paradigm and away from the fear. That's what we want to do and that's what we're doing. We're actively working with architects. We're working with, you know, we're, we're very specialized in, in creating high quality media. We're doing podcasts. We're doing a little bit of everything that gets the word out and it makes it possible, right? We've used right. crowdfunding to, we raised $28,000 in 30 days to, to make this greenhouse and then we're providing the plans to the greenhouse, how-to videos, all these things to, to the people who donated and eventually to, to, the, to the world, basically. So it's, it's working. But in that work, as much as we're creating this this 
energy, this energy force and this, this almost like this army of people who are now joining us. Okay. And in a very short period of time, we have, you know, less people on Facebook, let's say, but we still have the same support. We're all the same, you know, we're all a part of the same fight. I don't see your network as any different than mine or, 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 or Valhalla's or anybody. We, every, we're all a group. We're all in this together, but we are reading, meeting a lot of resistance by, by the city, by the current establishment, right? They're saying, well, no, but you know, you guys are practicing agriculture, but you guys want to have tourism with your agriculture, and you're in a zone where it's only agricultural. Or it's you guys want to build. Business. It's none of their goddamn business, and that's the point. They're little gray men busying themselves because so long people of the world have given them that way, given them this notion that they can, can take control over our lives. This is a nonsense. So we withdraw the contract. There is a contract in place, Mark. With you and all of your followers, all of the people folding into that, that noble uh, um, uh, movement, beautiful project, they are all entered into the contract. So I'm afraid if you guys step out of the invisible contract, jointly and separately, you're going to be bound by the terms of that contract. And the terms of that contract are that because of your birth registration, because you've signed that contract and entered into it, and you keep filling your names out in block capital letters on forms that sent to your home, you keep engaging in the contract. You keep giving them the legal fiction more reality than yourself, the living man. So, so the state or the, the municipality comes against the legal fiction and tells it doesn't do it. It checks the legal fiction in the courtroom, penalizes it, puts it into a prison cell. Okay, that's what's going to happen unless you t terminate the contract. And it's not just with the people, it's also with the land. Mm -hmm. Because the land holding is also... Uh, contained and constrained by statutes and codes that are laid out by the federal and the uh, municipal authorities. And that's because the land has been registered to that authority. You need to get the land outside of that registration and into a trust setup, which is outside of the jurisdiction or the purview of that local municipality. I would, love, I would love to hear a little bit more about that because I, I've um, so there's a lot of, I know the concept of what you're talking about, right? The, the all capital letter, or basically what you're at your birth, you are assigned a birth certificate. And then what you are doing is basically act, acting as the corporation of you. Now that's a whole concept that's going to blow people's minds right now. That basically, if you look at any, any card or any passport or anything, it will always have your name in bold capital letters um, that says, you know, my name's Marco Polo, for example. It will always say that. And you are consistently acting as the person in that, in that regard. Yeah. Now, technically, legally, you can operate and you can separate yourself from that legal entity and say, I am not all capital letters Mark Coppola. I am yeah. the XYZ living. person. I am a living person. I am no longer part of your, 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 your society of, of, you know, in my case, Canadian. I'm no longer necessarily uh, affiliated to the laws and, and regulations that you guys and this construct that you have built. But that's a, you know, that's a, that's a topic that would be really interesting to learn about what you guys are actually doing and is it working? Because again, I've heard these concepts, but I've never, I've never been educated enough to know what, what that really is. You know, I've heard of trust, I've heard of these things, but you know, we have this, this land, 60 acres, um, right now it's currently in the legal paradigm, but you know, do we fight that? How do we fight that? You know, and okay. you gotta, and you gotta have the right moves. I mean, the answer is very, We've spent a lot of time doing this years, okay? You just hit that link and send that to your folks and you've got it there. Uh, how, you know, how, how do governments obtain their power? How do you cease to cooperate? Why the need for you to cease to cooperate with governments? State-issued documents, can you continue to use them uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a conscious community? Citizenship defined and residencies defined. All this stuff is here. And then if you then choose to go even further, you can go to our law academy in the Institute. And again, we've got endless amounts of information there. We're also going to be um, beginning tutorials and workshops uh, later this year. Wow. See, see, by, by summer. That would be great to, uh, I would love to help promote that. I would love to, to learn more about it. I'm definitely going to hit the link. I already did, but I'm, I'm going to read up on it uh, once we're done. But there's so much that, that you've just knowledge dropped on somebody because not only can they step out of it consciously, and that's the first step, right? You have to in your own mind, get to the point where you have to you have to get over the, the fear of it all, and then you have to do it. And then, but now there is nonetheless these these legal steps and, and and kind of moves that you can make, almost like a game of chess against this system that is trying to kind of grab you in and trying to say no, you can't do that, and and that's not that's not 
proper, that's not legal, that's not, that's not right. And, you know, maybe I'm assuming that you guys have some great information. Um, we not only have great information, we've got a law academy, we've got a law commission, and uh, we're setting up a tribunal for natural justice agency, that one law law and the prosecutors, and there's our own court record. There will be a jury issuing uh, therefrom in the very near future on all these issues containing, uh, uh, relating to health and relating to the sequestration of, of energy technologies by our military complexes, by our government and so on. <laughs> Acting treason against the people. Governments are there to serve human beings, not the other way around. Okay, we've got a civilizational complex going on right now. It's upside down. Governments are meant to serve human beings. Repeat that to yourself, people, as a mantra. That's all you need to do. Wake up in the morning, repeat that mantra. Get onto the streets, repeat that mantra until governments back the hell down. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, we can start to gaze at our navels and start to remember who we are, start to reclaim our dignity, start to engage in love, in relationship, in fellowship with one another. Right now, we're like rats. We're all rats in a basement, running around, scurrying around, bumping into each other, bullying each other, trying to grab a crumb here, a crumb there. That's the kind of uh, uh, miasm that's being created civilizationally by this intercessionary principle of priesthood standing between humans and their God or their ideas of God. Bankers standing between people and their capacity to engage with prosperity. Doctors standing between people and their capacity to actually get well. Because doctors now, as we know, are all funded, principally funded, and trundled out by a pharmacopoeia machine. And they spout the same nonsense, that cancer gets cured by radiation. No, it doesn't. That's what kills you. Chemotherapy mm -hmm. is what kills. Okay, it does not serve cancer. Well, actually, it does serve cancer. It doesn't serve human beings surviving cancer. Whereas... Simply alkalinizing your diet and a bit of bicarbonate of soda and a couple of, you know, apple cider vinegar and a few protocols like uh, oil pulling on, on cold pressed, you know, sunflower oil. These are things that can legitimately reverse your cancer in days and weeks from mm -hmm. end stage cancer. Oh, but we're outlawed. We're not allowed to even say these things. Apparently, we're breaking the law. Try us. The New York Nation Health and Wellness Faculty is engaging this stuff and these cures and these treatments, and they belong to people of the world. They do not belong to the pharmaceutical commercial bottom line interests. I mean, the fact that the word is even called treatment, it says it all. It's never called, the, they're, they're, we're fighting for the cure, but what we're providing is treatment. And, and treatment means that we're only gonna treat the, the symptoms of the problem and not the cause of it. And the cause of it is, like you said, we have to, we have, to have an alkaline diet, I mean, cold pressed sunflower oil, uh, apple cider vinegar. These are all things that uh, my father actually does, ironically, in Vermont. Uh, I think naturally. I don't even think it's, it has anything to do with his research or his knowledge of such. But anyway, that's that's another story. But absolutely, there there is. I mean, what you're saying speaks to millions of people around the world, who I know are going to listen to this and still think, "Shit, well, I got to go to work," or still think, "I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure." Where do they get more information? How do they really, like, you, you, you mentioned it earlier, there's no real, there's no policy of, of joining, there's no restrictions as to who's in or who's out, but obviously you guys have a structure, right? You guys, I mean, you, you're not alone in this, you guys are doing certain things, you guys have somebody who, who is, you know, writing up your website, these kind of things. There is a way that people have kind of manifested their way of joining. We've got about 210, 220 administrators uh, internally with the New York administration. And, um, and that's within that body, we are managing to self-organize and roll, roll out. We're still growing. I mean, I think we'll need to have another, maybe another 150, 200 people before we fully stabilize and are able to contain uh, the, the, the patterns of growth in what we're doing. But again, I, I just need to urge, we're not a, cent a centralized movement, Mark. We're not trying to accumulate land and we're not trying to accumulate anything. We're simply acting as a as blank canvas and a protectorate upon which we're inviting the Valhallas of this world, which is the real movement, to, mm -hmm. to step onto this blank space, which is the protectorate and the pure law, okay, and then make use of the repository of knowledge and information and wisdom that we are embedding in the New Earth Institute, which belongs to all those communities around the world and all the members. So the, the New Earth Nation is simply the, 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 the blank 
the blank canvas. How a consensual uh, a thing, a meme emerges. Yeah. No, okay, I really get that. Now, I think that that, that rings clearer to me because, um, you know, I read your website and you, 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 you see things like communities, but then you say, hey, look, our intention is not to build community in that way. And then you guys have these retreats and you have a lot of, of, of information there, but it's tough to, to fully grasp just yet. I think you guys are getting closer and closer to understanding and, and not only understanding, I think you very much understand it within the core of yourself and it, and it shows, but um, communicating it in the clearest best way so that more and more people can can kind of be a part of it right can can kind of join into it and, and it it happens in an instant you can be a part of it now yes and let me give you another thought form on that is that we're trying to uh, teach we're not trying to spin out we're not trying to proselytize or prognosticate or educate the world we're not going out trying to sell snake oil to anyone we are acting as a living principle, as a, a, an aggregate of living principles which are emerging as the beacon which we determine is going to manifest as the world that we want. And people are falling into that, moving in toward that. But we're actively, we're not trying to dynamically go out and sell. Having said that, I'm in the process right now of working with some of our team on the PowerPoint, and, and that PowerPoint is going to be released probably next month in, in uh, April. And, and at that point, it'll be available to people to be able to show it to friends and family and classrooms in one hour and really get the alpha and the omega and get, get the kind of journey of what this is. Because it, it's, it's complicated because we're being all things to all men and we have spent the best part of uh, certainly a decade um, uh, in, in, in getting ready for this. So this is not something which we dreamt up on the back end of the Occupy Wall Street movement. This is something we began many, many years ago, very diligently working on it with economists, with ecologists, with environmentalists, with policy framers, with, with people, and, and constantly engaging the conversations. And then when we felt we were ready to birth the templates, we released it as a, a single posting on Facebook uh, in July last year. I think it was end of June or early July. We simply released one page, and we didn't even send it to our own network of people to let them know it was broke. We wanted to see how it took off, and it took off under, under its own steam. Yeah, no, I, 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 you guys came out of nowhere. You came out of left field. Like we, you know, I had started something like this, and, 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 and others that joined in, and we created this, this, this group of people we call the Valhalla Movement, um, and we began permaculture and we began getting you know more and more support and emails and people coming in and but you guys just like one day i was just like you were all over the place all over my facebook at one point and then <laughs> I, I checked out some of your videos and all that stuff and i was like wow this is really impressive and right. i thought that the you know obviously there was a lot of work there was definitely a lot a lot of work that went into it in terms of like you know you guys have these these almost 3d uh, I guess renders of what you guys are proposing to build, the, the types of buildings you want to build. We started building them. We spent about about six years, six and a half years, exploring the bioarchitecture, and we've been uh, we've been defining what we call the fractal community model, which is um, the most expeditious and beautiful and naturally resonant way to build out a community. Mm -hmm. on a grid that is completely independent from the national grid. So energy independence, food independence, but most importantly, we focus on the fractal element of the build out using the water molecule, the snowflake actually, and the, 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 the mathematics, the sacred mathematics of the water molecule, you will see that hardwired into um, pretty much all of the master plans we're working with right now, because we just learned that when you do engage with the, the sacred number, like you engage with the sacred sound in life, and like when you deploy consciousness into the, the, your living environment, it creates a feedback. It creates this incredible feedback. Mm -hmm. And if you build our communities out on this water molecule or snowflake uh, numbered fractal um, basis, and as you've seen, they're very beautiful. From the aerial perspective, they're stunning. We're not suggesting that everyone does this, but we're saying that in order to get as many conscious communities up and running in these um, uh, beautiful land holdings around the world, as many as possible, we're going to be following the most efficacious way of building out communities, and that is, in our estimation, the most expeditious way to do it. So that's how we're going to begin the community. 
then they'll start to become more free form once we've uh, begun to actually anchor the old world and the, and the new earth. Absolutely. I, I fully get that. I, 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 I mean, it's not for nothing that when you, you either take a psychedelic or you have a crazy dream or, or you meditate enough that you see these fractal patterns. It, it's super interesting. I would love to hear what you guys are going to do for energy. Um, I'm assuming, I mean, I'm assuming you guys are interested in things like Tesla technology, that kind of stuff. Stop, Stop. because we are, we, we, we've already founded the New Earth Tesla Academy with the Tesla Institute. So we work closely with everything related to Tesla. Yeah. Um, that's in Brazil with Boris Petrovich. But we, yeah, and there's an interview that I did recently with the, with the director of the Tesla Institute. And the, yeah, we're very keen on Tesla, Schauberger, Reich, um, and other uh, approaches. But we've also got a pretty rich history in the free energy domain. I mean, I've, I've been chairing the last couple of years the Global Breakthrough Energy Movement um, for the last two years since that movement launched. I was Director General uh, for a renewable energy organization at the United Nations, uh, which is an intergovernmental organization, uh, in 2010, and used that position to launch the Exemplar Zero Initiative, which was an initiative to be birthed at the UN under multilateral observance to effectively offer protection uh, to scientists and innovators to come forward with their technologies from the basement and enter the free energy game and put that, sorry, in the free energy discussion onto the intergovernmental table. So we already broke that barrier. Uh, I say we, that was myself and my uh, foundation, Humanitat. We did that in 2000. In order to, to galvanize that conversation on free energy, and so that we could explore all the vanguard and breakthrough technologies emerging around the world that we possibly could that lie outside of the military industrial complex. Because be quite sure of something, that whatever you think we've got in terms of breakthrough technology on the street, <laughs> the military industrial complex are probably a thousand years ahead. And I'm not exaggerating that. I know. I, I, I fully, 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 fully agree. In fact, I think thousands of years ago we were ahead. I think the pyramids were ahead. I think, I think don't, don't get me wrong. I think we, 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 there's a, they put a veil over our eyes. There's something that happened where we lost, we lost touch. We lost, we lost knowledge. There's, there's a reason why the, these secret societies exist and they have these secret knowledge that they, that they kind of, that they kind of pass on and they're, they're so indoctrinated into, into making sure that they keep secret and, and pass on in a, in a very, in their, in their mind frame, a very sustainable way. Um, it's there. I know it's there. I know it's there. Not because yeah. I mean, how are we 13,000 years ago, the last time we passed through uh, the photon back and up through the semi arc of the grand procession of the equinox, that was about 13,000 years ago. At that point, when the planet is not vibrating at the appropriate frequency, when she passes through that photon band, that vibral band that issues from the center of the, the galaxy, of the Milky Way, when she passes through that every 13,000 years, it's like the galactic day for 13,000 years, Every time she passes through that band, and that band speaks to the planet and asks, are you ready? Are the bacterium on your surface, the, 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 the species, the humans, have they, have they evolved? Are they ready for an evolutionary leap? <laughs> and we're not, we haven't been ready for that evolutionary leap into the next dimensional uh, frame. Then we get a reboot, a planetary reboot, a terrestrial, a terraforming reboot which is why we had cataclysm 13,000 years ago with the so-called flood, the deluge. And now 13,000 years later, we're just passing through that photon band again. And in, the reason why so much of prophecy has spoken about 2012 being the end of the world, doom and gloom, is because we were anticipating in the zeitgeist, we're anticipating in the, in the collective unconscious that we're going to enter into catastrophe again, into cataclysm because it happened 30,000 years ago, the last time we passed through this photon band. And yet what is happening is not that. We're seeing an illumination take place from within mm -hmm. because we're being bombarded. The entire solar system and this planet is being bombarded by this vibral light. And that, those light particles are inordinately small and they're able to infuse us from within and begin to cause the, the mask of Jupiter, so to speak, to fall away. So the shedding of the skin, of the, of the old skin, is what's taking place right now. 
In alchemical terms, they refer to it as the bifurcation, the falling away, the coming away of the parts that no longer belong together. Mm -hmm. So here we have you, Valhalla, we have Thrive, we've got the Resonance Project, we've got the Venus Project, we've got the New Earth Nation, we've got all of the great, glorious movements with consciousness, with dynamic engagement. They're all defining the new metric. And the order of things, the central banks, the high street bullshit, the billboards and Hollywood claptrap is now being revealed for what it is. Old nonsense. And it doesn't resonate with us any longer. We're choosing a different path. And that's happening. So I wouldn't worry too much about being closed down. I think round about now, the so-called authorities are really worrying about how they can sustain their own frameworks. And I agree. Keep themselves going. Yeah. I agree. They're, they're, they're having, there's definitely, you know, as much as people um, worry about the, the, these elites controlling the world and controlling this kind of stuff, I think it's, it's unraveling in front of them. As much as, as much as they might have all the money and all the things that, they, that, that are, are empowering them and have empowered them for the last X number of years or whatever it is, it is shifting. That, that freedom of information, that, that flow of knowledge, and not knowledge, not just because it's written on your screen or, or, or on your TVs or not, not because we have electricity running in our, in our walls, but the knowledge that is really within that, that, that feeling that we have, that feeling is, is huge. It, it's unexplicable. You can't, I can't grasp it. Now, you can't, you can't explain it to somebody. You can only feel it and you can only look in somebody else's eyes, as you said, and see that fire, see that connection and be like, yeah, you're, you see it too. You, you feel it too. And, and we're, now we just need to kind of look at each other and, 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 and step into it. Let's do it. Let's be a part yeah, of it. Just keep being it. And it's like, uh, I, I just want to correct you slightly and, and bear with me. But it's less about the doing, Mark, than it is about the being. And we've been doing things so far too long. We have not been being as sufficiently. So it's more in the being than the doing. But I completely uh, concur with what you say. Uh, that's, that's very wise. That's very wise. And, and you're right. I should change the, the lingo because words have power, right? And uh, at least today, in today's modern age and whatever. Words have a lot of meaning, a lot of power, and they have a lot of charge behind them. And so w you're right. It, it's not doing. It's not about we have to do this. It's about we have to be it. We have to, we have to embody it uh, to the fullest from, the, from you know, the, the lower chakras all the way to, to, to the crown chakras and stuff, right? We have to... And that's, and that's because being, because being in its true sense is the most dynamic point. Because being engages that Taurus, engages that energetic flow from the center out and start to feel it outward further and further and become more and more engaged with the greater field of expression. So you as a singularity can absolutely change the world, the entire world. In fact, it's incumbent upon you to do so. I, I have to end it there. You, that is, that is, I couldn't, you couldn't have said anything better to, to end this kind of podcast. I really appreciate you being a part of it. I really appreciate you, you knowledge dropping everyone on it. Um, I'm going to put links in the description, New Earth Nation. Also, I'm going to put links to what uh, Sasha sent me about stepping out of the kind of the legal paradigm that is today. I will, uh, I'm going to read up on it first of all, and then I'm going to, I'm going to share it as well. I really appreciate your time and I really appreciate you um, just doing this, just being, being it. That's what I really appreciate. Thank, thank you, brother. Lovely speaking to you and I hope we speak again.